This segment is going to discuss the accounting for the acquisition of long-term assets, property, plant, and equipment. Plant assets are assets that the company purchases that are tangible in nature. In other words, you can see them, feel them, touch them. These assets are actively used in daily operations. They are expected to not only benefit the period in which the asset is purchased, but also future accounting periods. We call all of these assets property, plant, and equipment. The accounting for property, plant, and equipment involves three areas. The first is what the cost needs to be recorded as an asset upon acquisition. The second is how to allocate that cost across all periods benefited, which is the depreciation, and how to record the disposal of an asset upon end of use when it is disposed. Today, in this episode, we are going to discuss the acquisition. In order to determine what amount we record in the asset account when it is first acquired, we need to compute the cost. And the cost that is recorded includes all costs incurred to purchase the asset, as well as get it in place and ready for its intended use. So one long-term asset is land. Land is not a depreciable asset. In other words, land is not an asset that we need to spread its cost over the life because it is not going to ever run out or be used up. So land is the one long-term asset that we do not depreciate. And because land is not depreciable, we have to keep track of it and account for it as a separate asset from any land improvements that are, even though there may be intended to be permanently on the land, they um, do have a limited life. For example, parking lots or lighting or parking meters, these type of things that are added to the land need to be recorded as a separate asset. And that asset is called land improvements. The amount that we record for land improvements is the cost to purchase the item for example, lighting, the cost we incur to purchase the lighting, plus any costs we incur to get the lighting in place and ready for use. So any installation costs or adjustments or anything of that nature. All of those costs are added together, but that total cost is recorded as an asset. For buildings, when a company acquires a building, they can either purchase the building or they can construct it. If the building is purchased, the cost recorded for the building will be its purchase price, or if it is constructed, whatever the costs of construction are. In addition to those costs, we would also include title fees, attorney fees, brokerage fees, or taxes. Remember the general rule. The cost that we record for an asset when it is purchased or acquired is the cost to purchase it, plus get it in place and ready for use. Three and equipment is another long-term assets the companies purchased or acquire for use in daily operations. The cost of machinery and equipment that is recorded as an asset may include its purchase price, plus any taxes paid, transportation charges to get the machinery and equipment to the company, insurance while it is in transit, and any installing, assembling, and testing costs. It all comes back to that general rule. Include all costs incurred to purchase the asset and get it in place and ready for use when calculating the cost upon acquisition. If an asset is purchased as part of a lump sum purchase, in other words, purchase more than one asset for one price, the total cost of a lump sum purchase of land and building, for example, is separated based on the basis of the relative market values. So for this example, on January 1st, ABC purchases land and a building for $200,000 in cash. The appraised values of each were, the building was valued at 162.5 and land was valued at 87.5. They're trying to figure out how much of the $200,000 purchase price should be allocated to building and land because the purchase price is the amount that needs to be recorded as the cost of the asset. So the simple way to do it 
is to add up the total appraised value of all assets purchased. When we do that, total appraised value is $250,000. The percentage of the appraised value that is attributable to land is the land's appraised value divided by the total appraised value, or 35%. Buildings is 162.5 of the total 250, or 65%. If 35% of the total market value of the purchase is attributable to land, we will allocate 35% of the purchase price. Purchase price was $200,000. $70,000 of it will be recorded as a land asset. Of the $200,000 purchase price, the other 65,000 will be recorded as building, or 130,000. So the journal entry here would be to debit land for 70,000, debit building for 130,000, and credit cash for 200,000.